Welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast, where we aim to inspire and motivate people to never give up on themselves or their dreams. We will chat with highly successful people from all walks of life and discuss what motivates and drives them to successfully attack life head on and never give up. Welcome to episode number five of the No Quit Living Podcast. I'm your host, Christopher J. Worth, and today's theme of the day is focus. Our quote of the day comes to us from Michael Jordan. Focus like a laser, not a flashlight. I'm beyond excited for today's podcast. I'm extremely humbled and honored to welcome today's guest. Not only is he a hugely successful individual, but he himself has one of the most successful podcasts out there. Having launched over 1,600 daily episodes, he is constantly lighting his audience on fire. With that being said, I would like to introduce John Lee Dumas. John, welcome to the No Quit Living Podcast. Chris, I'm fired up to be here. You are the JLD, and growing up, I was CJW, so I guess we'll, we'll go with that today. <laughs> Love it. So let's jump right into it. The foundation of our podcast is to motivate and inspire people to never give up. I wanted to ask if you had a personal story you could share with our audience about perseverance or a challenging time that tested you, but you kept on going and never quit. You know, I would actually have to go back to my time when I was supposed to launch my podcast, which was August 15th of 2012. I had everything ready. I had invested heavily in mentors and masterminds and equipment. I had 40 episodes recorded. EO Fire was set to ignite. And I woke up on August 15th terrified, paralyzed. I was like, I can't do this. I I, I don't want to launch this thing into the world. I'm going to get laughed at. People are not going to listen. It's going to be a failure. And then kind of my hopes, my dreams, my aspirations for this show and what this business, what Entrepreneur on Fire can turn into is going to be dashed. And I'm back at the drawing board, back at ground zero. And so I delayed for five weeks launching the show. And fortunately, again, going back to me investing in a mentor, which was the right mentor, she said, John, if you don't launch your show, I want to fire you. And so that was where I ended up launching the show on September 22nd of 2012. And it was the best thing that I ever could have done. Well, that is is very, very important in regards to I'm glad that she threatened you because if not, then we would not be speaking today. So I'm glad that you took the leap and, and the jump. (laughs) <laughs> Me too. Uh, many of our listeners are into personal development. I was curious if you have a favorite book and why. I have to say my favorite book is The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. I think it's critical that we understand that it's not going to feel like we're making huge strides every single day in our business, in our life, but it's doing the small things right every single day that can add up to huge results down the line. So just have patience. Do the right thing. Know that you're doing the right thing and know that you're going to see the benefits down the road. Not tomorrow, not next month, but when it matters. That is an awesome, awesome book and I would highly recommend it to to our listeners. I recently downloaded the 30-day PDF version of your Mastery Journal and I think it's fantastic. I love the productivity scoring and how important it is to track your productivity and growth. As I know you are a big college basketball fan, I wanted to share a quick story that I think you would appreciate. I just finished reading Pat Williams' book, It's Not Who You Are, It's Who You Know, which was fantastic. There was a section in the book on Bill Russell, who was arguably one of the top 10 basketball players of all time. I had no idea, but Bill Russell kept a personal scorecard where he would evaluate his performance after every single game. After the best game of his 1,128 game career, he gave himself a personal score of only 65. I think that speaks so much to the concept of not striving to be good or average, but striving to be and do your absolute best. Do you care to expand on that? Well, number one, I'm a big Boston Celtics fan, so uh, I love the Bill Russell, and I will also say that I'm a huge college basketball fan, and the Providence College Friars just beat Xavier last night, so all is well in Friar Town. <laughs> to your personal question about you know self-evaluation, it's critical, and that's why I made it a major component within the Mastery Journal, because listen, Your coach, if you even have one, is not going to be standing over your shoulder 24 hours a day. You have to learn how to self-evaluate yourself because you are with yourself 24 hours a day. So if you can learn and train yourself to self-evaluate, you're going to win. And so that's why within the Mastery Journal, every single day after your focus session, which will make a lot more sense for all of you once you buy the Mastery Journal – 
you self-evaluate. How productive were you? How disciplined were you? And it's a scale of one to 10. And you will understand after a couple of weeks what that score means and how you're trending. Are you trending the right way, the bad way? And it will start to allow you to understand what works for you, what doesn't work for you when it comes to being productive, when it comes to being disciplined, when it comes to being focused. And these are critical skills that you will master through the self-evaluation. And once you've mastered these three skills, the sky's the limit. Speaking of the mastery journal, is there anything else exciting that you're working on that you'd like to share with our audience? No, because I live by that mantra, focus, follow one course until success. The Mastery Journal is my one focus and will be until our launch is over on February 24th. In regards to that acronym, FOCUS, follow one course until success, I know you talk about it a lot in your podcast, and I think it's so powerful and simple at the same time. Eliminating distractions and focusing on one task is so vital to succeeding in any area of life. If you don't mind me asking, where did this acronym originate? You know, it originated from... um, it was Rich Dad, Poor Dad is, I believe, where I first read about it. And he referenced it from, of course, somewhere else, which I'm sure you can then continue to draw the line down and down and down to wherever it first came from. But, um, you know, it's definitely referenced by people who have focused on one specific task and seen success from that. And so for me, it just clicked. And I said, you know what? I love that word. I love that acronym. I'm going to implement it into my day-to-day activities. And so that allowed me to launch EO Fire, the podcast. Then it allowed me to launch Podcasters Paradise, which is now the number one podcasting community in the world. And it's allowed me to launch the Freedom Journal, the Mastery Journal. Everything that I've done that's been a success has been because I've focused on that one thing. And again, going back to your question of, well, what else are you excited about? Nothing, because I'm focused 100% on the Mastery Journal. And that's why... You know, we've recently crossed $200,000 in just 20 days of funding right now. And, you know, we still have 10 days remaining in our campaign because I've been giving it all of my focus. Wow, $200,000. That is that is incredible. In regards to the Kickstarter, you just launched, obviously, your second incredibly successful campaign. Any recommendations on that topic for any of our listeners who might be looking into or thinking about a Kickstarter campaign? Well, the great thing about crowdfunding is that you can prove or disprove your concept before you spend time, energy, effort, and money actually creating it. So if you're like, you know what, this might work. My audience might like this. Well, prove it before you spend all that time, energy, and effort trying to create something that people might not want. Guess what? How about you just step back, run a a Kickstarter campaign or Indiegogo or just any form of crowdfunding and make people prove that it's a big enough pain point that they actually will spend money on it. And if they don't, then you've just saved yourself. You've just saved yourself all the time, energy, and effort that a lot of people have already put into a failed product, service, or community. You can take back and try something else. No, that's that's incredible. And if you don't mind me asking, where did you first hear about crowdfunding? You know, just kind of having my ear to the grindstone and and always like interviewing successful entrepreneurs and seeing what they were doing and experimenting with. I just um came across crowdfunding and I understood the concept of it, just much like I understood the concept of, of podcasting. The first time I heard it, I'm like, this just makes sense. And I said to myself, crowdfunding just makes sense. And I just got it and I was excited to, to test it out. Oh, that's, that's awesome. So here's a question for you, a little different than where we've been going. If you could have dinner with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Ben Franklin, because to me, he's like the entrepreneur of the 1700s. I just love that he didn't take life too seriously. He was always willing to try new things. Like it wasn't all about the money for him. It was about the passion and the excitement that it brought him. So he did like a lot of cool things that were just outside of the box. So many people back then and today, you know, they just try to stay inside the box and they just try to do what other people have done that have been success with. You know, EO Fire was a success because I was the first person to do a daily show interviewing successful entrepreneurs. Um, you know, people have tried since then to replicate that and haven't found the same level of success because they're not bringing anything different or unique to the equation. Whereas Ben Franklin was willing to get out there and be outside the box and be weird and be different. And by the way, fail a lot, but come up with some big hits, some big home runs. And that's all people remember. No, it's funny you mentioned that, but thinking outside of the box is is so important. And you mentioned something that I think 
lot of people don't really think about is the most successful people out there, whether it's entertainment, sports, business, politics, they've failed more than anybody else. And I think people often forget that. So true. So in regards to thinking outside of the box, as we are always looking to add value to our listeners, one of the areas we often discuss is getting out of your comfort zone. Can you attribute any of your success to something specific that you have done out of your comfort zone? Well, only everything. I mean, all the magic <laughs> happens outside of your comfort zone. I think you have to remember that phrase is that if you're comfortable doing something, if it's easy for you to do, um, then it's in your comfort zone and nothing special is going to happen there. You need to get outside of your comfort zone, push the envelope, try new things, be willing to fail, and then be willing to really succeed as well. You have to be open to success just like you have to be open to failure. And a lot of people are closed off to both. And that's why they stay in their comfort zones and they take the same drive to work every day and go hide in the cubicle at a job they don't like for nine hours before driving home and trying to um, lose themselves in Netflix uh, binge watching. And, and, th and that's the reality for a lot of people out there, not people that are listening to this because obviously you found an entrepreneurial podcast to listen to. So that's not you, but sadly it is the majority of the population. No, I love, I love that. And it reminds me of a quote by the famous NFL uh, football player, Shannon Sharp, he's, where he says, I tell people all the time that you have to become comfortable being uncomfortable. Do you have a favorite quote? Um, I'll just use that one because it's really good. <laughs> all right, I will, give, I will give you credit for that. Well, li well listen, before, before we let you go, as I know you are an incredibly busy person, I wanted to ask if you had any parting words for our listeners. Well, I will use a quote for my parting words just so I don't cheat the listeners out of that. And it would be a quote by Albert Einstein, which is, try not to become a person of success, but rather a person of value. And for the first 32 years of my life, I was chasing success. And as a result, I just failed and I just struggled and I wasn't happy. But when I flipped that on its head and actually listened to those wise words by Albert Einstein and focus on delivering value... And for me, that was a podcast that was delivering free, valuable, and consistent content on a daily basis, which was Entrepreneur on Fire, my podcast. Then I started to find the success. And, and that is where I think we need to say we didn't have our priorities right. Value comes first, and then success will find you or will follow that. And if you just try to find success, it can be quite elusive as it was for me. That is, that is a great quote, and I will definitely – uh, in the out in the outtakes and in the conclusion, I will definitely repeat that one. What is the best way for our listeners to connect with you? All the magic for us happens at eofire.com. That's where we have completely free courses for entrepreneurs on podcasting, on webinars, on funnels, on goals. So just check us out. We have a great website there with a lot of free resources. And of course, if uh, you want, we have some amazing uh, journals out there. One is the Freedom Journal which is for those who want to accomplish their number one goal in 100 days. And you can find that at thefreedomjournal.com. Or if you're right now more focused on mastering productivity, discipline, and focus, I have created a 100-day system for you to do just that at themasteryjournal.com. I can tell you that I am a user of both two freedom journals as well as just as i mentioned earlier downloaded the pdf for the first 30 days of the mastery journal so definitely would recommend that to the listeners as well well john listen thank you so much for your time and i look forward to speaking with you soon thanks chris enjoyed it to sum up today's episode in our theme of the day focus jld shared some amazing stuff with us John truly not only talks the talk, but he walks the walk when it comes to the acronym FOCUS. Follow one course until success. I think we all have the ability to get distracted on a daily and perhaps even hourly basis, but the most successful people in life are able to reduce and eliminate those distractions and truly focus on what they need to do at that exact moment. When I asked John if he could attribute any of his success to getting out of his comfort zone, his response was perfect. He said, well, only everything. He then proceeded to touch upon the fact that all the magic happens out of your comfort zone. If it's easy for you, you are in your comfort zone, and you need to get out of your comfort zone and be willing to fail. If we can all agree that the most successful people in life fail more than everyone else, why not us? And why not right now? Let's all go attack today and go for our greatness.
And lastly, to our listeners, thank you. We truly appreciate your time, and we hope our episodes inspire you to keep on attacking life and never giving up. To quote Dr. Norman Vincent Peale, it's always too early to quit.